Hello RPGers! This is Hellfire RPGs and this series is all about looking into the history of RPGs starting all the way back in the 70s up until today. If you haven't seen the History of RPGs 1970s video you may want to check that out first. It examines the very first RPGs ever made and how they set the foundation for generations of RPGs to follow. I'll leave a link to this video in the description below. Before we look into the 1980s, if you enjoyed this video it would really help me out a lot if you hit like and sub for more RPG content. Alright, let's get into it, starting over in the West. When it comes to the RPGs of the 70s, it was all happening in the USA. While Japan's focus was on arcade gaming, it was the USA that was pumping out loads of computer RPGs created on university mainframes that were mainly inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. This trend continued into the early 1980s when perhaps the most well-known and influential early CRPGs were created. I'm talking about the Ultima and Wizardry series. Following the unexpected success of his previous title, Akalabeth, Ultima 1 was created by Richard Garriott in 1981 during his freshman year. This game was released on the Apple II and went on to sell 20,000 copies in its first year, which was pretty amazing. This success ended up seeing another five Ultima titles developed over the next decade, and these titles set many standards among later RPGs. Some of these standards include tiled graphics and party-based combat, and perhaps more significantly, a larger focus on narrative, as seen in Ultima 3, Exodus. The final game in the series, Ultima 9, was released in 1999, and fun fact, in 2020 Garriott attempted to revive this series but was turned down by EA. Next we have the Wizardry series, which was also released for the Apple II in 1981. Wizardry made use of many innovative features such as a 3D first person view, party based combat and pre-constructed levels that encouraged players to draw their own maps. It was also known for being extremely difficult when compared to other RPGs of the time. Wizardry almost immediately immediately became a hit and was the most popular Apple II game of the year, selling 24,000 copies which was just slightly more than Ultima. Just like Ultima, there was an additional 5 wizardry titles developed over the next decade, so it's safe to say that these two series were the dominant forces in the industry. Now, let's jump over to Japan, who were well known in the Western world for their focus on console games. This can be largely attributed to the Famicom, which was released in 1983, eventually selling 62 million consoles worldwide. And if someone asked you to name two big JRPGs from the 80s, chances are you would mention Dragon Quest developed by Enix and Final Fantasy developed by Squaresoft. But what about before this? While Japan eventually became well known for their consoles, the country actually produced thousands of commercial PC games during the the 70s and 80s. An example of this is Web Arm, which is the earliest known RPG to feature 3D polygonal graphics. It's also important to note that the Japanese market was filled with many different PC systems, and the difference between these and Western systems was that Japan's PCs needed to display images at 640 by 400 resolution in order to clearly display Japanese symbols. These symbols were much more complex and difficult to display when compared to English letters and numbers. This was a big factor that influenced Japanese game design. It resulted in clearer visuals that were years ahead of western systems at the expense of smooth animations through rendering moving sprites. I mean just take a look at the 1986 port of Mario Brothers running on the Japanese PC-88. The animations look horrible and the screen is unable to scroll with the player. The early 80s also saw the Yamaha FM synthesis soundboards being used in Japanese systems which allowed composers to produce chip tune music which was a staple of many RPG companies. Nihon Felcom are a prime example of this and they are still critically acclaimed for their soundtracks. Yep, the developers of the Trails and E series have been around for a while. So basically, this Japanese hardware was a big factor in influencing game design and was the reason why only a small portion of Japanese games were ever released in North America during this time. I am. Now, let's take a look into some actual games. Naming the very first JRPG is a tough one. For starters, many games of this era have unfortunately been lost, and many that haven't don't have clear release dates. Not only this, but the RPG genre is incredibly difficult to classify. Japanese developer Tokihiro Nato, creator of the Hydlide series, which was one of the first open world action RPG franchises, summed this up pretty well. He stated, Back then, Japanese people didn't have a well defined sense of the RPG as a game genre. I suspect that because of this, the creators took the appearance and atmosphere of the RPGs as a basic reference and constructed new types of games according to their own individual sensibilities. In my case, I never had the opportunity to use an Apple II, so I was completely unaware of Wizardry and Ultima. 
So, the early 80s was the period that the RPG genre was emerging into what it is today. I also find it very interesting that some game developers over in Japan may have had no idea what was happening in the USA market. It's almost like they were two different beasts, completely unaware of each other. So, while at this point the genre had not been defined, many people now consider Dragon and Princess released by Koei in late 1982 to be the first JRPG. Dragon and Princess was primarily a text adventure, but it did utilize party-based top-down tactical combat even before this was popularized by Ultima 3 in the USA. Shortly after this title, Koei released a game that was uh, interesting. It was an erotic RPG called Seduction of the Condominium Wives. This game was all about a condom sales visiting an apartment block where he must knock on doors trying to sell his products while battling Yakuza and ghosts who roam the halls. Next we have Black Onyx which was released in 1984 for the PC-88. This title was created by Hank Rogers who later founded the Tetris Company who licensed Tetris games. Hank was a Dutch American RPG fan who after moving to Japan noticed a lack of games like Wizardry so he decided to create his own. Black Onyx went on to become one of the best selling computer games at the time and was voted game of the year by Login who were then the largest Japanese computer game magazine. 1984 was a busy year with Hard Light and Heart of Fantasy being some other significant titles. The trend of combining role playing elements with arcade style action mechanics was popularized here by Namco's Tower of Druaga and of course Falcom's Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer was a real time hack and slash dungeon crawler and is considered the first action role playing game. It was a major success in Japan and contributed to the emergence of the action RPG subgenre. A year later, Felcom went on to release a sequel, Dragon Slayer 2 Xanadu. This became the best selling PC game in Japan and featured even more of the RPG mechanics that we know today. I'm talking character stats, action based combat with both melee and projectile magic attacks, equipment EXP and a karma system. It also incorporated a switch from side scrolling platform review during exploration to an overhead view during battle. The truth is that Nihon Felcom were absolutely massive during this time and it's hard to argue that they were one of the three most important JRPG developers of the 1980s, alongside of course Enix and Squaresoft. The late 80s saw a load of huge JRPGs, many of which were the very start of series that are well known even today. This is where things get really interesting. In 1986, gamers were introduced to a little action adventure RPG title that you may have heard of. Creator Miyamoto took the formula of Hide Light and Xanadu to a new level. I'm talking about The Legend of Zelda. Zelda featured melee combat, a huge world full of secrets, dungeons with puzzles and boss battles. While there wasn't the stats, EXP and grind ending scene in other RPGs of the time, this one is still definitely worthy of mention for obvious reasons. A few months later, Dragon Quest was released and this was revolutionary. Creator Yuji Horii wanted to create an RPG that reached a wider audience, unfamiliar with the genre or video games in general. He wanted to create a new kind of RPG that didn't require hundreds of hours of fighting and instead placed a greater emphasis on storytelling and emotional involvement. Horii combined many aspects of Wizardry and Ultima with a colourful art style and most importantly a user friendly menu based interface was introduced which is basically what every RPG uses today. This of course allowed the game to be easily played on a single Famicom controller. Dragon Quest was massive selling over 2 million copies and obviously this series is still going strong today with Dragon Quest 11 being the most recent title. Now we arrive in 1987 perhaps the most significant year of the decade. Not only was this the year that I was born but it was also the year that consoles became the definitive definitive platform for Japanese gaming and JRPGs. This is in stark contrast to what was happening with CRPGs in the USA. Let's start with good old Felcom. Back in 1987 they released the very first East title. They felt CRPGs were becoming too complicated and demanding so they designed East to be much more fun and light hearted. Like I said before, even back in the 1980s Felcom were blowing gamers away with what could be musically achieved in a video game. Later that year yet another RPG was released that started a massive series still popular today. Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei was based on the novel of the same name. While this series has seen loads of spin-offs such as the Persona series, one thing remains consistent and that is the ability to fuse into demons and 1987 is where this all started. During this time, the Master System also jumped onto the RPG train and released Fantasy Star. This one was influenced by Star Wars and featured many sci-fi elements which was quite unique at the time. It also featured 3D dungeons 
explosions, which is something that the Famicom just couldn't handle. I mean, these visuals were way ahead of its time, which is probably why it was the most expensive game for the Master System. And now we've reached the moment that you've all been expecting. Finally, we have the debut title from arguably the most popular RPG series of all time. I'm talking about Final Fantasy. Series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi wanted to create an RPG for a while, but wouldn't get the green light for it. That was until Dragon Quest proved that RPGs could sell well and finally allowed Sakaguchi to create an RPG inspired by Ultima and Wizardry. While Final Fantasy 1 wasn't as successful as Dragon Quest, only selling around half a million copies, it did go to sell another 700,000 copies in North America when it was released a few years later. The original Final Fantasy was the start of something special with countless sequels and spin-offs being released for the following three decades with many more still to come. It was the success of games like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest that really proved that JRPGs could be a mainstream success and that consoles were the platform of the future for these games. But it was the 1990s that really took this to the next level, with many gamers considering it as the golden age of RPGs. But that's a story for another time, or another video, so stay tuned for that. What was your experience with RPGs in the 80s? Did you play many of these growing up? Let me know in the comments. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. If you like this, it would help me out a lot if you hit like and sub for more RPG content. Also, come say hi on the socials. See you next time.